hello welcome to artistic frog studio i'm kimberly um i'm a fiber artist i do batik shirts like this one here it's my logo and just another shirt that i did a little while back um i've been working tonight um painting beeswax I melt this down in a skillet and um, I use a janting tool to um, to apply the wax and my tool is kind of hot right now but there's a janting tool and um, can also get uh, beeswax that's um, that's been filtered at uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I think they both have the same kind of stuff here. Um, I just prefer the natural beeswax. It's it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But anyway, I've been. Um, don't know that you could see that. I have um, been putting a design on my shirts here and um, let's finish drawing that off and this is a homemade light table that I have here already turned the lights off but um, it works it works um, I use a pattern that I made for a friend of mine uh, just graduated and uh, was very very proud of her so I made I made a t-shirt and gave that to her and I decided that I would um, make a lot of these t-shirts in um, in different colors it's all got the same design but we're gonna be doing different colors uh, in different areas and and taking the same design and just kind of changing it up a little bit and uh, I think it's gonna be really cool so uh, y'all could be watching out for that but um, I have oh goodness I have several this is one that already has the beeswax on it don't know if you can see that real well but um, the red is just a marker, a washable marker that I use to draw the pattern on with. And then I come back and uh, with the molten beeswax and either using a janting tool or, um, or a paintbrush, um, I come in and, and paint a design. Then we put it in dyes and... Uh, Come back and paint some more and put it in more dye but uh, we're just concentrating tonight on just painting the beeswax so hopefully y'all stick around and watch me paint some of that so um let me um get my camera adjusted and we will be right back all right here we go. Um, have my um, beeswax melted down in a um, in a skillet here, and um, my janting tools are just in a an old can, and that just um, simply keeps them from falling down into the wax. Um, just helps out a whole lot. So let's, uh, let's jump right in and get started painting. I've been working with this tool 
before I started recording. It's got some burrs on it. So I just take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of work with that and smooth it down a little bit. That. Okay. Let's see if that works better. Still have the two. It's still just a little bit rough. But I think it'll work. Let's raise my temperature a little bit. My wax is kind of cool. Doesn't want to go all the way through. You can see it's it's mostly gone through the inside of the shirt. Um, that'll be fine. That's enough to um, get the really sharp design. Really defined design that I'm looking for. A long time since I made a video, guys. Just a little shaky on this. We've been uh, able to take a little bit of time off and got the pleasure of taking my mother to the beach. Hanging out in Gulf Shores, Alabama for a week. And uh, it was just beautiful, beautiful weather. Come back home to all of this flooding and everything that we have going on here. Praying for all these folks that are being flooded out. Um, all of this water coming from Oklahoma and all of the rain that we're getting tonight. So let me show you this. Um, the, uh, the wax has heated up just a little bit, so we should have a really, really good design in the back. Uh, it's gone through there, so could have really good design on that. And the shirt 
is a little large. Just kind of move it around. This beeswax is set at right around 200 degrees. Um, turn it down just a smidge. I have been working on some um, some thicker shirts, and um, this shirt is <laughs> pretty thin. I'm Turn that temperature down just a little bit. Hope that's not off camera. If y'all can see that. Have to be careful with my sleeve right here and not get it in the wax. blow on that and help it to dry a little bit so I can readjust without burning my hand. And let's get started with his with his ears here. My hand's not blocking everything. You all can see what I'm doing here. We are painting the wax. Can't be paying attention to anything else. This wax is, is so hot, you have to pay attention to where your janting tool is going, uh, where you want your line to be. And you have to be mindful all the time of um, where your hand is under the shirt. Sometimes I get quiet when I'm painting because I really have to concentrate.
Batik is such a fascinating process. Um, it's really different than anything. Um, anything else out there. It's, um, it's just it's really cool. Um, I also paint on silk and it's kind of the same um, some people will call it batik on silk um, true batik is uh, where you use the molten beeswax and and do full immersion dye baths and and um, and come back and paint more beeswax and um, more full immersion dye baths um, with the batik on silk, they're just referring to that they use a resist, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be wax. There are certain resists that you can use um, that can be uh, washed away with just water, some... Um, there's just all different kinds that you could use. But um, in silk painting, you come in, you usually come in, and uh, once you've built up your border for the flower or whatever you're painting, then you come back in and you actually paint inside certain areas. Um, and you could, it's just, some people are just not, um, I don't know. Batik gets thrown around a whole lot out there, and um, sometimes that's, it's not, it's not true batik that they're doing. It's just a resist process that they're doing. Still fun, just different. But I enjoy doing the uh, the silk painting also. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. You get a whole lot more variety with um, silk painting than than you can. Um, batik on cotton and doing the full immersion dye baths. I didn't fully explain that. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Well, we're almost finished with this one. Let's see. Let's do You know what? This is yeah, it's on the front.
trying to cool that line off so I can move it around a little bit. Let's go around to the back and the shirt. Let's lower this shirt. I do try to sign all of my uh, all of my artwork. Let's see if I can hold that tag out of the way back there. Hmm. Trying to get that tag out of the way, and I don't want to burn my fingers. Baldridge. Kind of sort of looks like a little butterfly there. Anyway, that's the way I do that. Um, and I wanted to show you I am going to do kind of different techniques and like I said, different colors on some of these. Let me show you this one that I had already done. Let's go up a little higher. Okay. Now this one, put it back in the picture here. Okay, this one, I have already painted the, the beeswax on there. That's, that's hard. Everywhere that I have painted the beeswax is now going to remain white. Um, when I come back in here uh, and do the full immersion dye, and let's just say it's purple. Okay? So, um, everywhere that beeswax is not painted is going to be purple. So, I would then come back um, with a brush mm, dip it into the molten beeswax, and I would paint all of the areas that I wanted to remain purple. And then I would put it in another dye bath, whether it be um, turquoise. Um, and you can, you can work your way up to three, sometimes four colors. You really, really have to know what you're doing to be that advanced. Right now, I'm liking the two colors. I have done three colors. Um, I just like the two colors. Well, actually, with the white, I guess it's going to be three colors, but... Anyway, um, so that's the way we do that. And I just want to show you here because um, in future videos, you're going to see this. And I think it is picking up on the camera. I very, very strategically um, crackled the moon. And the way I did that, and I can just use this brush too, up take the point of this brush and you know how meteors have hit the moon and you you get that you get that effect you know um, when you put this up under there and you kind of manipulate the wax so that 
you get the kind of crackling, specific crackling that you want. And not just crackling all over. So see, we have another one here now. And then we have a, a lighter one that's going to it's going to appear lighter because uh, the cracks are not nearly as heavy. But um, that's the way I did that. So if you're um, if you're working on something and you're doing batik and you, you want a certain kind of a crackle pattern, uh, like you could, you know, basically get it all going vertically or horizontal, horizontally, not all of them because a lot of this crackling you can't control. Um, that's the reason why I use the pure beeswax is because I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and crackle this while we're talking, because um, I like to ha I like my moon to have lots and lots of um, stuff going on up there. So. Um, So the main on this one is, um, y'all saw it here. <laughs> That's the way it's going to be. So, um, I think that's going to be cool. Still a little bit more crackling up here. And if it's a really, really hot day, um, something that I had to do last summer, um, I was painting and even though the air conditioner was on in the house it it was still pretty warm and even after um the shirt had sat with the wax on it for a little while it still didn't want to crackle the way that I wanted it to crackle so um you can either um if you've got a spot in your refrigerator, just stick it in the refrigerator or um, hold it up in front of an air vent or an air conditioner and, um, and get that wax cooled off and you can, um, you can then crackle it if you want. But um, that one's going to be like that. This one... Um, I did this technique on, uh, on a shirt that I did for my sister, and it turned out really, really cool, and I don't really know if it's going to be too much or too busy, um, with um with the owl on there too because th it was just a, a like a half moon and some stars that I did for her shirt. So let me show you. Just come in here. And you do squiggles. And you want to leave some white and um, you know this is actually a great technique um, for if you need to practice um, Practice using the chanting tool. Um, and you can just kind of just go all over. Oh, that's hot. You know, um, I've had people tell me that um, 
you know, working on a flat surface. Oh, can y'all see that? That may have been too close. I'm sorry. Let me move y'all down a little bit. Um, sorry about that. I've tried to work on, um, on a flat surface. I've tried it several times because my arms are not that long. And I have a lot of trouble with um, doing the long lines. And um, especially when I first started. And um, I just can't, I can't get it to work very well. Working on something flat. Um... I like the mobility of being able to to um, move around. Sometimes I struggle when I'm on camera because I'm trying to make sure that it's it's in the shot and you're seeing what I'm doing. Um, so it may look like, you know, it's, it's, it's a struggle for me to do it this way, but in actuality, you move so much faster, um, when you do it this way. So you want to try to maintain the same kind of, um, you know, squiggles or you could vary them if you wanted to do big squiggles and little squiggles and, um, you know, Work with the janting tool to where you're, if you move the tool slower, you're going to get much thicker lines. Whereas I'm moving it fast, I want kind of a, like a lacy look. This kind of. And if you see any big holes that you're not happy with, that doesn't really jive with the rest of the shirt, then you can um, just go back and fill that in. These supplies, the janting tool, um, the janting tool you can order uh, from Amazon if they have it in stock, or you could order it uh, from Dharma Trading Company, and they're out of California. They have uh, really cool supplies, um, not only for batik artists, but for fiber artists. Um, they have blanks that you can buy, meaning um, clothing, apparel, uh, all kinds of things that is... Uh, it's ready to die. RTD. Um, so if you want to, 
if you would like to to try batik um, you could get your uh, supplies from Dharma trading and they they actually have um, they don't have the the natural 100% beeswax they have a batik wax and um, it's got um, paraffin and beeswax I believe that's what's in it um, I have not tried it um, the only two waxes that I have tried I used this first because I could use it um, with a, a 40 percent off coupon and got it at Hobby Lobby and um, so that's how I got started with this and just ordered the um, the janting tools from Dharma trading and um, my mother gifted me the uh, this old uh, skillet that has seen many, many, many chickens fried up in there. Um, so that's basically how I got started. Um, I, I just had some old brushes. I haven't invested a whole lot in brushes. You don't want to use really, really good brushes once the brush hits the wax. It is, it's not going to work anymore. Um, for anything else other than batik and wax. Um, what else to tell you here? Um, so, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, I am going to be doing, plus I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven or so shirts. I'm going to be doing all, it's the same design, but I'm going to be doing them in different dye baths and um, just uh, waxing them up in different ways to see uh, see how many very variations on the same design that we can get. I just think that's going to be interesting. So, um so stay tuned, and um, always likes and shares are uh, wonderful to help get the word out about Batik. And um, so you guys have a blessed day, and uh, we will see you later. Thanks for watching.